Okay. The only Romanians I've ever known were in odd culture. Anyway. Okay, so here we go. Today we are working on chapter seven. And next Tuesday, we will work on chapter 8. That means we're only going to put today into chapter 7. Chapter 7 deals with, with stages in relationships. It deals with love. Yep. And I've asked you to bring a definition of love, and Mr. Stevens is going to lead you through a discussion of that. Uh, it deals with theories of interpersonal uh, communication and relationships. And we're going to look at just two of them. Um, and then on Tuesday, we'll go on to interpersonal conflict, okay? So you'll note, if you look at the, at the syllabus, it says that I was expecting to be out of here uh, on next Tuesday. I was, I was thinking that I would probably be going uh, into, into chemotherapy and would be gone, and we would have small group meetings, chapter nine post quiz, yada, yada, yada. We're, we're behind a little bit. Um, your paper one for unit two should be in. I haven't looked yet. I thought it was Tuesday. 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 Should be in by Tuesday. Which one? And you notice that it says April 17th. Um, Paper three would be due, but that won't be the case. It says paper two due today, the 12th. No. Nah. Just get paper one in, uh, and for the 19th, paper two. Okay? And then out of those two, you'll choose one that you think is your best unit paper. We're only going to do two writings that I'll give you feedback on. Okay? And by the, uh, yeah, hopefully the 19th we'll, we'll start into leadership and membership in small groups. Okay? Hopefully we'll get caught up by then. And we'll see about having small group meetings. So today we want to talk a little bit about relationship stages. Uh, and if you look at page 141, <coughs> DeVito has a nice, uh, nice chart of relationship stages. But what it doesn't talk about is what you know well, that is that these stages don't happen the way textbooks tell you, that is in nice, clear, differentiated parts, but stages are kind of messy. The stages are kind of messy. And sometimes we're not where we, where we think we are. For example, it's fairly, you know pretty well when you're just in the contact phase, right? In just the beginnings of a relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship, you're just in the contact phase, what do you talk about? Most of your talk, when you're just getting to know somebody, what do you talk about? Interest. Interest? Colton, what do you talk about? Hmm? How each other are. How are you? What do you talk about? <coughs> How school's going. What do you talk about? What's going on in their life? Currently? What's might not get to what's going on in their life at any depth. You might get to the surface, you know. Uh, if you're playing on a sport, you've got a team, you, but you probably won't hear about any illnesses or any heartbreaks or any sorrows. In the contact relationship, you're establishing basic information about, about each other. But as you begin to deepen your relationship, you move to what DeVito calls the involvement stage. What do you talk about when you're involved? It says testing and intensifying. What will intensify a relationship? What will intensify a relationship? You want to move beyond just that basic how you doing. Say, Having hey, isn't the weather interests. something? Having similar interests. Having similar interests. Commonality. Hmm? Commonality. Commonalities. You have to take a little risk to intensify the relationship. If you never get beyond that kind of surface, um, you know, oh, Ashley, your hair looks so nice today, uh, that kind of surface talk, if you never get beyond that and get to either ideas or feelings, the relationship stays at the surface. But if you like that person, if you want to be friends with that person, 
you have to begin to risk a little bit of your life. You have to do what? Self. Self. What do you? The Joe. Remember the Joe Harry window. You have to self. Open. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna bring stuff into your open self. You have to self disclose. But if you begin to self disclose, if you begin, if you begin to talk to the other person, for example. Ashley, last night I was reading some Immanuel Kant, and Kant's idea about duty just, I mean, it just woke something in me that I'd never thought of before. And Ashley goes, that's nice. Are she and I going to have philosophical discussion? No. No. Is philosophy, might philosophy be important to me? Yeah, but it's not important to Ashley. So our friendship isn't going to go in that direction if we have a friendship. Right. But if I, you know, if I, if I start talking to Brad, not just about the surface of sport, but why sport is so important to me, why I'm a fan of the Cubs, right? Despite their losing ways, which haven't stopped, one in five, I think, maybe one in six. And Brad, Brad, do you know what it's like to back a loser? I mean, but have you ever have you ever invested your life in, into a, a club that just can't seem to win? So James is James is not in his head, right? Yeah. And we could talk about that and how that feels beyond the surface, and how this is important to you because this is where part of your identity is, you know, because you're a Bears fan, and any cheesehead coming to class with a Packers shirt. Christmas house, she thinks she's gonna. Okay, this is where you have to test these things out. You become involved with one another. As you move along, you test more boundaries. You test more of a relationship. You allow it to deepen, and you come to intimacy. Let me talk about the word. Let's talk about the word intimacy for a moment. What does intimacy mean, Jeremiah? Uh, that's kind of. In depth, that's really in depth. Okay, really in depth. Really personal. Really personal. What does intimacy mean in our society? If if someone says, Brandon, if someone says, Stephen and Melody, Melody's not here, so we can we can <laughs> talk about Melody. Stephen and Melody got intimate last night. What do they mean? Uh, they usually, had sex last night. they had sex last night. So you can count on somebody who's forward to not be unafraid of that. But that's what we mean when we say people got intimate. Can is sex intimacy? No, it can be. What keeps it from being intimate? The personal connection. If you don't like, if you're talking, if you're looking at that person, and you don't have any like mental connection with them, and it's purely lust. Yeah. Then it's not going to be intimate. It's just gonna right. Be Should you always resist pure lust? It depends on your lifestyle, I guess. Doesn't it depend a little bit on your age too? Yeah. If you guys, you guys are mostly between 18 and 20 years old. Some of you may be 21. I would say, you know, for you guys, it might be a good idea to resist pure lust for a while. But when you're in your 20s and you are mature and you understand that this is lust and you take proper precautions and you and you watch what you're doing and you make sure that you're not hurting each other and you've decided together this is just for fun then that might work but you've got to make those kinds of decisions many people think that if I ever have sex with somebody that means that we have a relationship forever but that's not true. That's not true. But it's also not something that you should just kind of woo-hoo willy-nilly uh, and, and take no thought of, of consequences. Think about consequences. Think about consequences. Use protection. Don't spread things that shouldn't be spread. But you can get naked and not get intimate. Right? 
And at some points in your life, that may be okay. And at other points in your life, like now, it probably isn't okay. You want to hold back. Grow up some. Okay? But true intimacy can involve getting naked together. It at least involves getting your mind naked together. That is, you share your deepest thoughts, your deepest emotions. It can be a friend with whom you have that kind of intimacy. But it can also be a, a, um, a romantic partner with whom you have, hopefully, that kind of intimacy. Does that mean you tell your friend or your romantic partner everything? We're going to go back to that self-disclosure. Kate, do you tell your friend or romantic partner everything? I would say I tell my boyfriend probably 99% of everything. Yeah. But you should withhold some things. Oh shit, no, I probably tell him like 75% of things. Yeah, okay. You should withhold some things. You should withhold some things, even from your most intimate person, your most intimate friend. There are some things that just you just keep to yourself. Like what? I'm not, I'm not asking you to tell me the thing. Give me the category. Okay, Kate. well, like, I talk to other guys, yeah, but not like, in a, oh, yeah, let's get together tonight. And he would, like, flip out. Right. Like, so, I told him I drank, like, with guys here one time, and he was like, oh, okay. And then... And like I told, like I said something the other day about it, and then he just like flipped out again. So, so that romantic partners telling romantic partners about other friendships may not, it may be something you don't want to do. What other things might you not tell to your romantic partners, people you're intimate with, or your or your best friends? Stuff about your past relationships. Possibly stuff about your past relationships. They don't need to know. As long as you're not bringing something to the current relationship that is going to infect it, either physically or emotionally, you don't have to talk about your past relationships. What else? <coughs> what else? One time I had um, a friend, and she liked my boyfriend a lot. And she told me, she was like, I really like him. You might want to watch out. And she was joking. And I was like, fine, we're not friends anymore. So, so things that will damage this relationship, even even a deep relationship, don't tell. She was a really close friend. I would have talked it out. What else? What about your illnesses? Everybody gets sick. Do you tell your best friend the details of your illness? No. 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 I do. Like, my best friend. like the size of the chunks that came up. And oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Not that detail, but... Well, that's the detail that I'm saying. So you see, even, even your best friend, you can tell them, I was, I was sick last night and I was <laughs> worshipping at the, at the porcelain uh, throne, but, um, but you don't have to tell them about what came out. Do you help your best friend when they get sick? Yeah. If your best friend gets sick and they have some physical ailment and it's coming out of them, you help them. Do you ever talk about it afterwards? No. Not if it's embarrassing to them. Okay. So there are some things you keep to yourself. Intimate friends can have some parts of, their, of that hidden self still hidden and still be intimate friends because those hidden things can get in the way of the intimacy. As you move on through those stages, and we had an example. Somebody said in a friendship, watch out, I could steal your boyfriend. And that broke the relationship. So we have some stress, some conflicts, and those can break relationships. How do we repair relationships? How do we repair relationships? Watch what you say around them. Okay, you can watch what you say and avoid breaking it, but if you've said the wrong thing, how do you repair a relationship? Okay, now how do you repair a relationship? You know, I need to say sorry. First thing, you use, you use that apologies that we worked on last time. You use apologies. Oh, I'm sorry. I Be said honest. something I shouldn't have. What else do you do? Kate. Be honest with like, how you feel and like... 
How it made you feel. How it made you feel. Own that feeling, though. Mm -hmm. Don't lay it on him with a, you know, when you said that about my boyfriend, you broke this relationship. No. When you said that about my boyfriend, I felt that I didn't want to be in a relationship with you anymore. I'll take responsibility for how I felt. Okay, so own your own feelings. What else do you do to repair a relationship? What do you do if it's a long-term romantic relationship and it's fallen apart and you want to keep it? You go get help. You go get help. Thank you, Caitlin. I appreciate that. That was the obvious answer. You go get help. How hard is it to go get help? A lot of people are stubborn. A lot of people are stubborn. It's really hard to accept you have problems. Hmm? It's hard to accept you have problems. It's hard to accept you have a problem. It's hard to accept you have a problem you can't fix yourself. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times you can't even see what the problem is. But go get help. Go get help. Men will resist more than women. Why? Why will men resist more than women? If you're told in your, in your romantic relationship, we need to see somebody. Because men are supposed to be able to fix it. Supposed to fix it, and what's the counselor going to tell you, Stephen? What's the counselor going to tell you when you go see the counselor? I got issues. Counselor's going to tell you you got issues, which means James, you got issues means that you are right or wrong. 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 Most guys will come to counseling with the attitude of. I don't want to be here. You're going to tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> You're not going to help me. You're going to make me do things I don't want to do. You're going to embarrass me. Okay? Guys, if you love that woman, that man, that partner, understand you have those feelings, but get over it. Go to counseling. Most counselors are not going to tell you you're wrong. They may make you do things that you don't want to do, but it is worthwhile if you love that person and you want to repair that relationship. Sometimes even going to somebody doesn't fix it. But you come instead to the notion that it's time to end it. So 22 years ago, my ex-wife and I went to counseling. And I felt like I was being told by the counselor that I was wrong. And I felt like I was having to do things that I didn't want to do. And I felt like I was being embarrassed. And ultimately it was good for me, but the relationship didn't last. The relationship broke off. Okay? But we broke it off in a way that we could remain at least on civil terms. And that's, that's all we needed for the sake of the children. Now the children are grown. How are you going to talk? We don't have to. We have, nothing to. we have nothing in common any longer other than the children. Our lives have gone very different directions. And she it's okay. Live in Kansas? No, she doesn't live. We weren't in Kansas then. We were in Minnesota, and she lives in Illinois. Oh, I'm sorry. Which is ironic because that's my home, and she lives there. Oh, well. All right. Well, tell her how you feel. <laughs> no reason to. No reason to. Okay, so those stages of relationship, when you get to the point where the relationship needs repair, you can either repair it and return to a stage of intimacy, or you can dissolve the relationship and go in a different, in separate directions. Let me start that up again. In our course site, you will find a PowerPoint that I'm not going to use, but it may help you review some of this. I do. So if you go to the course site on the Swede, on the handouts. By the way, here's writing two prompts, so you want to get there. Um, well, yeah, here's the love PowerPoint. I got the prompt. So if you want to look at that, you can you can download it as a way to review. We have just a couple more topics to cover before we're out of business today.
Uh, oh, Stephen did a really nice job of walking you through that, yeah, and did. should uh, get at least his 25 points. Um, we do have some additional opportunities for class leadership. It does help you because you're going to get at least a part of the chapter uh, that reinforced in your own mind. Let's see, can I get my book back? Thank you. And this will all be on, uh, it will be on the quiz that open, will open this afternoon. I want to review the questions, make sure that we've covered everything in the, that I questioned about. But I will give you an example of a relationship and say, what kind of love is that? And you get to choose from the list of the types of love. Know that that list of love, uh, there are other lists of love that are three and four, uh, but uh, Lee did some uh, background research and came up with these six types of love and made them actually three with three subtypes. And uh, uh, Hedrick and Hedrick, who are mentioned in the book, just made a, a list of six. All right. So if you look at, in the text again, uh, or if you if you're just following along, there are two more things that I want to talk about, I want us to talk about in chapter 7. Uh, and that is uh, where do you get, how do you choose the person with whom you're going to be friends and with whom you are going to be romantically connected. One of the theories about about uh, romantic connections. I'm dripping, excuse me. There we go. Here's my blotter. Sorry about that, guys. Hate to, hate to snot in front of class. Uh, one of the theories about romantic attractions I think you'll find, you'll find to be true is that physical attractiveness plays a large part in initial initial uh, uh, relationships. More so for guys than for women. What's the top thing that guys want in a date? The top thing, James. What does she got, what does she have to do? James Berry? Uh, what does she have to do? Yeah. Girl that you're going to go out with the first time, you're going to, you're going to summon up the courage and ask her out. She has to be outgoing and fun. Okay. There's there are a couple of characteristics that you you actually will rank second. Let's tell the truth, Brad. Tell the truth. You haven't met this girl very well. You just you're very much on this level. Your relationship is just. At the, you haven't even gotten to involvement yet. She has to. Going on. She has to. Murphy's got. It. She she has to make you want to hang out with her because. Go ahead, because she. She looks good. She looks good. Thank you, ladies. Guys, you will not date a girl that you don't think looks good. Right? And you have your standards, right? And they're very shallow. No. There was a there was a movie a few years ago called Shallow Hal. I love that. Right? And and it's absolutely true. Our guys, our standards are in our eyes and in our brains. And the more you look at the more you look at porn, the more you think she ought to look like that. So give it up. Meet actual women. Meet actual women who have many pleasing physical qualities. And remember, guys, you don't. You don't always have, you're not always looking good. Ladies, what's the most important thing for a guy? Muscles. <clears throat> hmm? Muscles. Muscles. And <laughs> muscles and looks. What part of it looks? <laughs> His face. He has to have a pleasant face. But what makes a pleasant face? A smile. Smile. A guy who smiles is going to get a lot more dates than a guy who's always scowling. 
wait for a woman to meet her. All right? Keep smiling. Physical attraction in the early stages of a relationship is very important. <clears throat> but the other thing is proximity. Proximity. Many of you have relationships like Kate's where the BF or the GF is far away, right? How, How hard is that to keep it up, Kate? Well, he's not that far away, he's but... He's only an hour and 15 now. He used to be 10. That was hard, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to keep that relationship at a distance. We have we have a faculty member who's, yes. whose spouse is on the coast. That's hard. You have to work at that. But getting to meet somebody, how likely are you to meet somebody who is in California? Not from California, but in California. Not unless you're really into the internet. Even if you are. Ashley, how likely are you to meet somebody who is in California? Not very. Not very. They've got to be around. And even if you're into the internet, you should be a little suspicious. So one of the things, uh, page 149, DeVito talks about attraction theory. And the two that I would highlight for you are physical attractiveness and proximity. Physical attractiveness counts at the beginning, but once a relationship is established, it's not quite as important. It's not quite as important. And finally, uh, DeVito talks about relationship rules, family rules, blah, 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 blah. Two theories that he, two sociological theories that are very important that I want you to, to hit on. Page 152, social penetration theory. Social penetration theory talks about what happens when relationships develop. And as you develop a relationship, right, you have more topics you can, you can share with your partner and you share at a deeper level. And when you have many topics that you share at a deep level, you have a very strong relationship. If you have only a few topics that have some depth, you have a weaker relationship. You have, if you have no topics that have depth, you have a very shallow relationship that is likely to break if you are a ludic lover when you stop being entertained. If you're an erotic lover when you stop being stimulated. If you're a pragmatic lover when it stops being uh, uh, worth your while. Social exchange and equity theory talk about why you stay in relationships. Kate, you, you're one who has a, a long time relationship as well as a distance relationship. What do you get from your relationship? Have you thought about that? What do you get out of that relationship? Love and happiness. Love and happiness. Love do, you and get, happiness. do you get affirmed as a person? <laughs> Does, does he encourage you in your pursuit? Yeah. Your, your academic pursuits? My what? Your academic pursuits, does he encourage you in your school? Yes. Uh, is he one who's, who says, when you, when you have some rough times, can you go to him and he'll say, and he'll say, it's okay, you're gonna get past this. Ignore these people in the back. <laughs> mockery, mockery. Because they don't have that. It's jealousy. Yeah, it's they don't have that. Happen. Right. Oh, That's social equity. That's social exchange theory. You, you have to put in a lot of time for this relationship because he's an hour ten away, hour and a half away. He used to be ten hours away. Oh, good grief. You have, to, you have to invest a lot of yourself in this relationship to get back. What would happen if he started insulting your schoolwork? I'll slap him. If you got a D, if you got a D, and he said, "Yeah, you spot what you can do." No, he would probably be like, I'd, I'd probably call him an asshole or something. Yeah. I know. I tell him that he should probably get his grades better because I'm doing better than him right now. Right. And you'd start to withdraw, wouldn't you? No. You probably would. I'd be funny about it. You probably would, because if you get hurt a lot. If you don't get back from your lover, you start to withdraw. Emotional hurt is difficult. Well, is different than like if you're like hitting or anything. Right. Yeah. Then you very much would withdraw. Equity theory 
take social exchange. Social exchange says we, we're in a relationship because we need something back. And we will stay in the relationship as long as we feel we're getting value. Equity theory says we'll stay in a relationship as long as we feel we get as much value as the effort we're putting into the relationship. And when we have to do more than we get back, we start to reevaluate that relationship. For guys, the traditional guy thing is you buy meals. You take her out on a date and you buy meals. You actually put money into it. If you put well, money be responsibility all the time. Uh, I paid for dinner last Friday night. <clears throat> Good. But okay. traditionally guys guys will pay. And if guys guys are paying and the the woman they're taking out dismisses what they've paid, says, Oh, that was you that was cheap. Well, not I didn't like that. They don't pay. I don't like that. The girl won't appreciate it. That's crap. <laughs> they'll stop to, they'll stop doing that. Yeah. Particularly like, like, you don't appreciate Right. <laughs> and equity theory yeah, says know. when they when the uh, return on your investment is less than your investment, you will drop the other partner. It's, it makes of our relationships an economic case. And there is certainly, there is cer certainly a lot to be said for that. Um, he, uh, DeVito ends up the chapter with culture and gender and technology, things that we don't have a whole lot of time to deal with. I want to go finally to 166 and talk very briefly about workplace romances. If attraction theory says one of the one of the issues 156 156 did I say 166 sorry workplace romances if one of the the qualities for attractiveness is proximity once you leave college where are you going to meet people at work make sure that you understand the hazards of dating someone you work with. If you are a boss and attempt to date someone who is below you in the chart of hierarchy, you are in big trouble. Do not do that. Date at an equal level. Item one. Item two, understand if you are dating someone in your department and it does not work and you break up, Galen, okay, you're smiling at this, what happens? You date someone in your own department, it doesn't work, you break up, what happens? It's bad. It's awkward. It's awkward. Hmm. If you're dating someone and the company policy is no Fraternization. What does that mean? No. You can't date people at your own at your own workplace. Oh. Some companies have this still. It it is an old-fashioned policy. Some companies have this still. Most companies do not. You go behind the back of the company. You try to hide it from from your supervisor. You will get caught. Why do you think that will get caught? You will get caught because you will get caught. Because you will, if it's a good relationship, you won't be able to hide it. Will that person be talking too much or? But what's what? No, if you get too serious, eventually you're gonna want to show it. You're gonna be honest. Like you're not gonna want to live. And if you don't, the person's gonna feel like you don't. You're not proud of it. Right. Two people. Two people. Let me let me tell you why okay. you will get caught. Two people on this staff, on the staff of this college, two people who don't work in the same department. They don't work together at all. Right. They're both going through divorce. Right. So they both have their heartaches. I saw them together. I saw them not. They weren't doing anything. They were just together, in the same space and something clicked 
And I wrote to one of them and said, are you and she a couple? And his response was, well, no, not exactly, but how do you know? It was obvious. The same thing is going to be true for you if you're dating someone at work, seeing someone at work, and the policy is no fraternization. But if you guys know that's the policy, and you know you have to hide it, just like you said, the agreement between sex, yeah, that is just it's just sex, no feelings. You can do the same thing. It's our relationship, but we know at work. It's if it's a real relationship, it's real hard to hide. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's real hard to hide. Can I be hypothetical for you? You can be hypothetical. Thank you. No. All right, folks. I don't talk like that. Chapter.